of these oils coming out with the machine, blade spinning under vacuum, literally a consistent stream of oils. So last episode, we were running the machine off the generator. Well, not running the machine off the generator. We were attempting to run the generator off the products of the machine. But we did run the machine off the generator for the first time, low power run. Here's the thing, getting this generator to run off of this plastic natural gas is gonna take a lot of adjustment. We saw that the engine does have some misfiring or potential knocking off of this plastic natural gas. The, I don't know what exactly needs to be done, perhaps the carburetor may need to be adjusted. But the point is, the first priority is going to be the biggest benefit of this generator. And what is that? The biggest benefit of this generator is actually that having this generator will allow us to run more magnetrons than we ever have before. Thanks to all the different ports on this generator, right now we're on 120, I have some 220 microwave power supplies on the way, which will solve this problem, right? But since there's so many ports on this generator, we'll be able to run at least seven, but hopefully up to eight magnetrons at one time. And I want to really focus on that because that's a huge deal. More power than any machine has ever seen, ever. And that should actually give us some good results. So I want to do that. Let's do a full power test run today. See what the results and products look like oil wise, natural gas wise. And then we can try to see, you know, what we can do with this natural gas. Because like I said, right now we're kind of in a position, right? Where it could be easy to lose focus on that when the machine itself isn't even done yet. So let's go ahead and do this full power test run. So I have got a scale to let us measure and weigh how much plastic we put into this machine. The unfortunate thing is, I actually still have some plastic in the machine from last run. I had to end the last run prematurely. So I'm not gonna weigh how much plastic I put in today. This will be the last day I don't, because obviously, since I have some in there already, if I weighed some, we don't know how much is in there already, so it'll be kind of inaccurate to tell you, oh, we're putting in five pounds if there's already like three pounds in there, right? So this will be the last time I blow up plastic in without weighing it. I'm gonna also try something. I'm gonna show you what happens when I try to load this reactor continuously. So you see the plastic and carbon mix that's in that chamber there. What's been happening to me normally is that when I open up the bottom valve, all that sticks together and it does not just fall in the machine. I'm gonna try something different. We're gonna put the machine under a vacuum with the vacuum pump, then open this up and see if the machine being under vacuum will kind of suck it all down into there. All right, let's go ahead and turn this vacuum pump on. So this number is in inches of mercury or HG. And we can see the machine is being put under some negative pressure. We're gonna get this number to probably about, let's say eight, eight HG and see if that's enough negative pressure to suck that plastic down. All right, let's open up this bottom valve here and see if it would do it for us. So it looks like that was not it. You saw the plastic just moved up a little bit. Nothing really happened. Unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to change the continuous feed system to some type of auger. So the plastic got stuck and compacted together, so I'm left here having to dig it out of the feed. on gasoline it must not have much running amps and I'll tell you that why right now I have five magnetrons on in this machine the same amount we had when I was running it off my wall when I turn on six magnetrons which is going to be about 60 amps the generator circuit breaks now that's an issue because Right now, this, all the power supplies going to this machine are operating off of 120 
AC because the transformers from microwave ovens are 120 AC. Now this generator has more than enough running watts to run at least eight of these in terms of wattage. However, think about it. If I turn eight of these on, that's almost 100 amps. That's 80 amps on the low end, right? Now, the only solution to this problem is 220 for these power supplies to be 220 instead because that will cut the amperage in half. So if I can run five right now, that means I can run 10. And I have some 220 power supplies on the way from China, from Alibaba. 220 microwave power supplies, 1,000 watts each. Should be able to run eight to nine of those, no problem, and pull about 40 to 45 amps. But until we get those, I can only run five transformers and that's kind of useless because I can literally run that much from the wall without a very loud generator running. In fact, off the wall, I would plug into three different circuits so I can run six. I have a 50 amp circuit on my wall, so I think the best thing we could do is wait on my power supplies to get here. Because like I said, this generator is really loud. It's the same amount of power going in anyway. So what's really the difference, to be honest with you? Now the one good thing about using the generator is I can give a, a direct cost analysis. I can say, okay, let's run the machine for five hours, let's put in $20 of gas, see how long that run the machine, see how many products we got for $20, right? That's a good thing. And like I said, the generator will really come into play a little bit later, but right now it just does not seem worth it to even go through all this mess of you know, having this loud generator to only have as much power as we had before. So we got some flammable vapors coming off the machine. But like I said, about 20 minutes in, at the 30 minute mark, we're gonna turn on the vacuum pump and put this machine under continuous vacuum. All right, so about 30 minutes in, 35 minutes, you see we got a lot of natural gas, so we all full. So let's go ahead and turn this vacuum pump on and get this thing running under continuous vacuum. So we can see the temperatures we're at. 144 C body temperature in the middle, 100 C vapor temperature coming off with the vacuum pump on. We can see these side glasses are full of vapors and oils as well. But there's not much continuous oils falling down yet. The temperatures are not quite there. Take a look at the vacuum flame that comes off. This is without the vacuum valve all the way open. Wow, beautiful. Can't even see the flame, but you can sure hear it. It's barely even visible, crazy. The vapor production is crazy. Take a look at all those vapors. Goodness gracious. Like an angry cloud. The blades are not even spinning. That's why I worry about are we really condensing all the oils? Because just look at the pressure of it coming down, how much. And this is the sight glass, so this is past the condensers. Condensers are ice cold, you can tell by the pipes. But despite that, I wonder if we're getting oil up here. Because all the oil should be falling down here. Now granted, we are getting good oil flow, so it's hard to tell. All of these oils coming out with the machine, blades spinning under vacuum. Literally a consistent stream of oils. The most oil I have ever seen come out. So the total liquid yield from this run was about 300 mil of the oil here. And when I say total liquid yield, I do mean after the oils have been separated. So this is the pure oil. Not mean that the oil is pure, but rather there's no water in here. Because just so you, for your knowledge, guys, when we get the oil out of the machine, a lot of it is water. It's about half oil, half water. So 300 mil for about a two and a half hour run uh, with five magnetrons on. So definitely a way better oil yield than before. You saw we got a ton of oil come out at the end there. But we want to do even better. We want to get even better oil yields. So... We're going to add more plastic. Next run, like I said, we're going to weigh it. So this was the last unscientific run. We're going to start to get scientific with it. So there you have it, guys. 300 mil. Let's go. So after doing a lot of field tests on the generator here, I came to the realization that I was incorrect. I was erroneous. Take a look at this generator. Look at it. 
gasoline, 10,500 running watts. 13,500 peak watts. We've been running this off of gasoline. Every time I turn on more than five magnetrons, this breaker flips. Now, this is the main breaker of this whole generator. So, this covers all of these circuits. Now, I don't know what this is rated at, this main breaker, but I would assume probably no more than 50 amps, right? I mean, that's about how many we turn on before it breaks anyway. So, the reason why we're even hitting 50 amps is because we're running this off of 120, okay? So, every single magnetron is going to be roughly about 1,000 watts. Some of them are a little bit less, some of them are a little bit more, but roughly 1,000 watts. Now, you do the math, 1,000 watts at 120 volt AC is going to be about 10 to 12 amps, right? Each. Now, I have some 220 volt microwave power supplies on the way. Do that math. 1,000 watts at 220, 240 AC, you're going to be at about 4 to 5 amps. So I'll be able to run double the amount of magnetrons once we get this thing off of 220. Now, here's the thing, though. I have a 50 amp circuit on the wall on my house. That's what I'm running the machine off of right now. I could do the same thing off of that, right? So I have to ask. The only advantage to this generator is going to be if we can make the generator run off of either the gasoline we make or the natural gas we make. Because other than that, I can run this machine at pretty much full power, eight to nine magnetrons off the wall and be under 50 amps, even with everything, all the other electronics on, right? Um, so that's the real only advantage to that generator because it's so loud as well. It's so loud and then it creates a lot of waste heat and some other logistical things that are not that big of a deal. But the point is, there's no point in running it right now until I get my 220 power supply. Literally no point because I literally am running five right now off the wall. It's not loud at all. It's fine. I don't like running the generator, to be honest with you, because of how loud it is. But I will. If I, if I, if that's what's necessary for the best results, but right now it's not worth it until I get my 220 power supplies. Like I said, they're coming from China, Alibaba. They shipped uh, last week, so they should be here soon, relatively. That is. So that's the move. We're gonna continue to run this off of electricity. On the, another thing, I want to mention, guys. I don't want to get overzealous. Okay. I know I, we have this idea of let's run the generator off the natural gas from the machine. That is a lot of logistics because not only do we have to figure out the right stoichiometric ratio to get the generator running smooth under load with this and then the right amount of pressure coming off the machine, but then we need to actually get the machine done first. I don't even have the continuous feed system going right, which I'm looking at some type of shaftless auger feed corkscrew design, and we don't even have the max power of this machine yet, so we don't even know the true capabilities of the machine and we're trying to do something that really is more fina finalistic, right? That's more of a finale thing to get this machine to run off of its own products. So I'm not trying to get overzealous, lose my focus. Let's still focus on the test runs. I can still calculate the general electrical draw, but especially once I have all this running off of one circuit, because right now with this running off of my wall with five magnetrons on, I have this split between two circuits. So I, it's kind of hard to tell my electrical consumption right now, but we will be able to once I get this all running off of one circuit. So that's our focus right now.